In today's video, we are diving deep into the realm of luxury fashion, and we'll be discussing the designer handbags with the highest resale value. That's your jam. Be sure to like and subscribe. So let's jump right in and discuss, shall we? So as a heads up, I don't buy my bags typically to resell them. I'm in the position where if I'm not wearing it, for a long period of time, it's time for it to go. And if I want other bags, there's no sense in hoarding all of them. So if I want to resell them, it's my liberty to do so. <laughs> so don't try to come for me for doing that. You know, a lot of you know YouTubers on here, they're like, oh, she buys our bags to resell. She buys them to resell. I feel like if people buy their bags, they should be able to resell them. Hey, that's just me. So this article is from Vogue, and these are the handbags that they have provided with the highest resale values. I'll link the article down below in case you're interested. And also all of the bags mentioned will have links in the description as well, so you can check those out. The handbags with the highest resale value. I don't know if these are in ascending or descending order or if they just listed different bags, okay? But we're gonna start with the first one that they mentioned, the Row Margot, which retails for $50.90 or is that the resale price so y'all familiar with this bag y'all have seen it everywhere this bag is, is cute it's nice okay it's nice i just don't understand the hype behind it it's just and i hate to say this because i'm a huge or used to be a huge mary kate and ashley fan okay i don't understand the hype behind this bag i just think they have brilliant marketing behind this that have basically forced themselves into the media into social media to get people talking about this bag because otherwise i don't see what's going on i don't see what the big deal is but they are speaking of of the soft Margot 17 bag in leather. I will say it's always sold out, okay? I just didn't know about the resale value, but I guess so because it's so, you know, highly sought after and people weren't able to find it, so they're selling it and making a killing. I wish I could get my hands on one and do the same. Because, I mean, it's nice, it's cute, but I guess if you're into the whole quiet luxury thing, you're into simplicity, classy, classic, then this might be a great choice for you, but I just don't understand. And I guess it's not really for me to understand. I can only imagine what the resale price is if they even show me that. They should have put that on here too. So I don't know if that's going to show me this, but I'm guessing they're saying, okay, you could get the highest resale value if you sell this bag. So that's what we're going to go by. I'm not going to spend time going through and seeing what the resale price is. Just know that, you know, you're going to get the large, sorry for the background, it's my daughter with the nanny downstairs. Um, you're going to get the most bang for your buck if you go with one of these. Okay. Okay, next from Gucci, we have the Gucci Jackie 1961 bag. That's not surprising because it's come back. I mean, it was first introduced in 1961 and it's come back in a more modern version and people are going crazy over it. They keep releasing it in different colors, different patterns, different fabrics, and it's still going strong. This doesn't su surprise me that it's on the list. I think it's cute. I don't think it's basic, give or take. <laughs> It's not one of my favorites from Gucci, honestly. So y'all know what the Gucci jacket looks like. It comes in different sizes as well. I just think it's a bit over, I mean, I think the price is okay. Gucci, you know, has more affordable prices compared to other designer brands. So the 3350, I feel like for the size of this isn't bad. It's great that you can buy it and resell it if you ever wanted to. Okay, and next, Bottega Veneta, the Andiamo bag, 5100. This actually surprises me because every time I go in, to sell, well, I've sold most of my Bottega bags. Every time I go in, they're like, and I'm talking about fashion files, they're like, oh, they're not giving, they're not paying too much for Bottega. So it really surprises me that the Andiamo is on this list. Still, especially with all the dupes that have come about. Y'all know about the Amazon dupes and all of that. Or if you don't know, they're on there. This one's on there. And it's not exactly like it, but it's so close to where, why would I pay 5,100 for this? <laughs> I mean, that's just me, okay, that's just me. But it's good to know that some Bottega bags, regardless of that, regardless of the intrechado, intrechado, I think that's right, intrechado leather, it can be duped but not imitated, okay? Because they do have like some, tor some sort of patent, I believe on the size of it, to where they can't copy it exact, legally, okay? So it's good to know that if you're investing this much in a, an actual Bottega bag, that it's still gonna hold its resale value. <laughs> as far as if it's worth 5,100, I don't think it is. I personally, I feel like all Bottega banana bags are overpriced at this point. They have taken the hype, they've taken the media craze, and they have ran with it as far as shooting their prices up. This bag is not worth 5,100. It should be three grand at the most, in my opinion. But hey, that's just me. Who am I? Comes in beautiful colors though, some large, bag it can hold your life in there i mean anything you need it to and then some and it comes in some gorgeous colors too the yellow is stunning i actually really like it but 5100 
No, man. No, no. Loewe basket bag. Now, I surely can attest to this because I bought this bag for a trip and I ended up selling it because I only bought it for the trip. I didn't want it after that. And I got almost what I paid for it, which is crazy. I was like, wow, I didn't expect that. But I, I happily took my coins. I'll tell you that. So if you're curious about Loewe basket bags, if you're like me and you want to buy one for a trip or just for something in general, you don't plan on holding it too long, then they have good resale value. Just keep that in mind. And I can surely agree with that on the list because I personally dealt with it. And y'all know the basket bag comes in so many different colors, so many different styles. Like this one is just the up and down, or not the up and down, but like more of a square version. The one I got was more of like a, an open version. They have the tulip trim basket bag. They have different choices. I'm not sure if all of them have great resale value, but the one I did did. And then the one that they have on the list clearly does. So um, I would assume that all of them have great great resale value. So just keep that in mind. By the way, if you're new to my channel, I'm Candice, your go-to source for colorful, edgy, feminine fashion, and in all things luxury fashion and designer bags. If that's your jam. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss my videos. I post every Monday and Thursday, sometimes on Saturdays, so don't miss out. Next, we have a bag from Totem. I'm not too familiar with this brand, although I've talked about some of my favorites in past videos from the brand. And this particular bag that's on the list is called T-Lock Leather Top Handle Bag. I do think this is cute. I don't think it's severely overpriced like some of the other bags on this list. And it's quite nice that this holds as a resale value. It's good to pay, you know, a not so much of a high price for a bag and then have it have great resale value if you want to get rid of it later. I do think this is quite practical. I love the closure on it. I love how it, co it closes completely. I love the strap. I, I quite like this bag. I don't see it for me just because this isn't the type of bag I gravitate towards. It's too big, but I still respect it. I see why people like it. I like it. I just wouldn't buy it, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, next from Prada, we have the crossbody bag. Which one is it? Okay, let's see. Oh, this retails for $17.50 and it's from the men's line. See, I told y'all they have some gems on the men's side. Don't sleep on them, okay? Don't sleep on them. It's for men's, but I mean, who wouldn't wear this? I would. This is the men's nylon and saffiano crossbody bag. So it's a mixture of nylon and saffiano which is nice. And I quite like this. I like this for the guys. I like this for the girls too. So I think it's a cute crossbody bag. It's simple. It's not quite quiet, but it's understated. It's simple. I like that because you can carry it like that. You can carry it on the shoulder or you can wear it crossbody. And it looks like you can hold quite a bit in there. And the fact that it has nylon and saffiano leather, that's a chef's kiss. It's a chef's kiss. It's the best of both worlds. Next, from Saint the Lulu Medium Shoulder Bag for $3,200. It's great. This bag has been around for so long. I ended up getting rid of the Lulu that I did have. I believe I had a small Lulu. It just wasn't for me. I got it because I was influenced because I was on social media, on YouTube, and everybody had one. But it really wasn't a bag for me and my style, but I do respect it. I did really like it. It just wasn't my style. That makes sense. It probably doesn't, but hey. <laughs> This is the medium size. It's quite great that this bag has been around for a while and it's safe to say that this is a true classic from the brand and 3200 is it's shot up, you know, in price since it's been around. But nonetheless, it's, I mean, clearly it's worth it because it's still holding up in value. So clearly the construction of it and the style, the classicness of it is still a plus because the resale value speaks for it. Okay, next from Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton, however you say it, okay? I'm not French. This is the pochette accessoire for $15.20. And we're just speaking of this one, not the multi-pochette accessoire. This one has a simple shoulder strap. It has a chain as well. And it's just a, a smaller size. Do I think this is worth $15.20? Absolutely not, but who am I? It does have your interior zipper here. I mean, compared to the price of other small Louis Vuitton bags, I guess, okay. It's just strange that they ended up on the list and not the more popular bags from Louis Vuitton, like the Neverfull or something like that. It just surprises me. Or even the Alma. Alma, mm, no, no, no. Maybe it's not, you know, as popular as the Neverfull, but it's surprising that that ended up on the list. Let's see. This cannot be, there's no way this is an extensive list because there's so many that are missing, like the Birkin, the Kelly. We know those have great resale values. Chanel, classic flat, I'm gonna say no. They, when you try to resell it, they don't give you what, you know, they don't do the percentages on how much it's increased, so they give you more, uh, don't work that way. The resale value on the flat bag sucks, okay? Trust me, I know. But yeah, I'm not sure how they did this list because there are a lot that are missing. They're missing quite a few, but maybe, let me just look. 
I'm gonna just look. Okay, I understand now. This is from the article. Vintage is experiencing a, a huge resurgence and we're seeing strong demand for styles across Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and Prada. Styles with high investment value are trending in the secondary market Hermes, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, the top of foreign brands in terms of average resale value. With like the Hermes Constance, the Picotin, Chanel de Viltote, and Louis Vuitton Neverfull. Okay, okay. So they are still reselling high, but these are just new bags that have made their way into the list. That makes sense now. I was wondering like, how do they have more resale value than like these others? But I get it now. Let me know what you think of this list. If you think any others should be added, if you feel like some shouldn't be on here at all, let me know that too. And in case you missed my video where I talked about Amazon dupes for all of these popular luxury bags, check that video out here. Talk soon.